Welcome everyone back to the Crimson 15 Podcast. I'm your host, Crimson 10. David TPCA. Nate 454. Be sure to check us out over on Twitter, at C15 Podcast. Join the discussion over on Discord, link in the description below. And if you're enjoying the videos, be sure to sub, like, share, and hit that bell for notifications. The Owl House Season 3, Episode 1. Thanks to them, or is it thanks for them? I always mix it up. But uh, I know the series is over. The the first, the final episode aired, I think, today. But at the time of this recording, it aired today. And um, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to try to pump these out a little bit quicker. I'm just really slow about this kind of stuff, guys. But uh, this episode, I liked it. It, uh, I give it a 7.9 out of 10. I, I do mini reviews. Check them out over on TikTok. I do the YouTube shorts. But it's going to be the big, long, super long uh, review. This is a double episode, basically. So it's like 44 minutes long. I like... Let's start with the things that I like. I liked the... We learn more about kind of like the Philip dynamic of what happened with him and his brother a little bit it's through fable and tale so it may not be true as we saw in this series pretty much all the fables are real <laughs> and the, there's a fight scene that looks absolutely mwah, spectacular if the whole show looked like that it'd be the coolest effing show ever just just visually but it's also jarring that when it goes back to normal animation it's like oh we're done with the cool animation the there's a vibe with hunter because you know i was connected to the you know, I'm a Grim Walker. I'm a clone. Uh, I'm like part Bellows has, you know, like he created me. So there's this creepy vibe with him this whole episode, especially when he starts thinking he's seeing him everywhere. And it's like, ooh, you know, because the goop, some of the goop survived from when he got splattered against the wall. So there's all that cool little vibe going on. It's fun to see the kids together, but they're, they're still a little too silly sometimes. Then she just kind of a version of apocalypse on your home world and now you have no idea what state it's in but we're still going to be goofy and dress up in cosplay and i don't know it just some of that stuff just just it brings it back because the more you think about it it's like uh i know that you they're trying to find a way back to the demon world the demon realm but they're still like oh let me read a star trek book and let's dress up like star trek characters <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's just i know they're kids but I, if they're 12 and 13 years old, 100% acceptable. They're 16, 17 years old. Mm, we're starting to like, no, you, you, being acting this silly just isn't that, that you're, you're going pat. You grew, you should have grown past that kind of silliness. And uh, the mom, uh, Camilla, Carmen, Camilla, her and Luce, pretty good moments. I do like how they open up to each other. We even have a little moment with the, the mom has like these nightmares about her daughter because there's a lot of, you know, stuff happens when her dad died and she got really weird, but she always was a little weird. It, it didn't make things any better. I like that dynamic. And um, I'm trying to put my finger on, the, the, you know, besides the silliness and the kids acting like little, little kids. And then everything could be avoided if people would talk to each other. That's it. All they had to do was be honest and they would have solved all the problems. <laughs> Just Especially when this is like end of the world stuff, guys. You gotta stop hiding things. You gotta put it all on the table. But we open up. Let's get right into the episode. We open up right where we left off. Hey, mom, I'm home. Standing in the rain. Remember that. Standing in the rain. Because it comes up later on in the episode where it doesn't make any sense. So they're like that. And they're just cooking and everything. And then, you know, the mom's being mom. So she's going to be taking care of everybody. Uh, Hunter kind of gets alone with Luce. He's like, hey, so how's everything going, you know? And this, they're still trying to hold on to their secrets. Remember how... Uh, Luce went back in time and ended up helping Philip. If it wasn't for her, none of this would be happening. But at the same time, you have to realize Philip would have figured it out eventually. And then Hunter, keeping the fact that he's a clone, you know, a Grimwalker, he's always like, shh, don't say anything. Like, anyone even knows what that is. Like, is that a, a, a term people know in the demon realm, what a Grimwalker is? But they're trying to be super hush about it. And then, you know, oh, we're, everything's be fine. We're going to figure this all out. We have a good scene with the mom. And loose. I do like how everyone's trying to help out because they're good kids. All the kid, all these kids, they're good kids. And you know, we see them in the hallway, and it's really nice. I like the mom daughter dynamic, and I do like the fact that Luce is starting to like figure things out. Like, whoa, I made things really hell for my mom, and she keeps wanting the mom to get angry with her, but the mom's not going to do that. But at the same time, it, it it almost feels like a relief. Like, is she holding it back? Is she not really mad? Is she mad? Because when someone's angry with you, it's easier to process that. I've done that in my life where I found it easier to deal with people I know that don't like me than people who do like me. Isn't <laughs> that kind of weird? But it, it's an odd thing. And maybe it's a it's a it's a Hispanic Mexican thing. I don't know. But 
then we get um it's the montage of like uh we're super gay <laughs> which is fine i don't care it's a weird way to come out to your mom instead of just like sitting down with her and be like, oh, Amity's more than my friend. She's my girlfriend. We've been dating for a little while, but she makes like a video collage. I don't know. I just think that's super weird. But then like they're like, yay, super fun gay times. And it's just like a we get a a montage of time. And I'm thinking, how long are they here? They're, apparently, they're there for three months. We get some cool outfits. I think they look a little fun. Someone was telling me that these were going to be episodes that they never got to make. But here's the issue with that. Where is it all going? Like how how many episodes was Lumity, just Lumity running around being Lumity? Like, okay, I know Twitter absolutely loves that kind of stuff, but story. Looks like they were trying to use their palismans to make magic, to like open a door. I don't know if that would work because Titan's blood is like super powerful, like unbelievably, ridiculously powerful. Your silly little palismans ain't going to get it done. But I can have them like on hamster wheels and they were going to like, it's, they don't explain. It's all montage, so it's like no words or anything. It's just like music. Uh, they end up lighting things on fire. <laughs> They're not going to burn the damn house down, but then they stop. And like, oh, man, we, we've been trying for months, and we still haven't been able to figure anything out. So, you know, it's a little heartbreaking because they're trying to figure this out, but they there's no magic here on Earth. There's nothing. I don't know how they're going to find, you know, I was thinking in my mind, like, what are they going to do? Find a, um, like, a. I thought they were going to end up discovering some type of, like, power source, like a power gemstone or something like that. Remember I talked about them standing in the rain when they got home? Then it's raining again and Luce is like, oh, then they have like a big kind of girlfriend moment outside and Amity's scared of the rain. But wasn't she standing in the rain when they first came here? Why would she be scared of the rain? Like this whole scene, I know it's cute, but if you think about it, why would she be hesitant of the rain if they walked in the rain, stood outside in the rain? It, it just doesn't make any sense. But they all go outside and go play in the rain because on the bowling aisles, rain is like deadly. You can't touch rain. I do like Luce's absolutely horrific drawings. <laughs> it's they're they are so reminiscent. They're, they're they're middle school drawings. Like you know when you think you can like I want to draw my own anime. I am guilty of such things, and um, yeah, it's funny. But she's starting to think about you know you know uh, her family back. She has two families. You know her family in the on the bowling aisles, and she has her family here on earth but then she's feeling bad that she's keeping all of them from their families now she's with her mom but then she took all her friends away from their parents so she has all this weighing down on her she goes to regular school which is kind of fun but remember v uh she's there and then she's like smarter than all of them but she's been there a long time so they're like learning spanish which is it's good to learn a second language but spanish it's not going to help you in anything especially when you go back to the demon world where there is no spanish everyone speaks english they all everyone speaks galactic basic but uh, they're trying to learn Spanish and everything. And um, oh my God, Flapjack, that's his name. I was going to say Flip Flop. <laughs> Flapjack is like digging around. They, they're living in that little abandoned crack house behind their home, which is so weird. There's no way this thing will not be filled with graffiti and all kinds of dirty, nasty things from teenagers doing dirty, nasty things in there. It wouldn't just be some empty little house. But they like fixed it up and made it their little like, I don't know, their, their, their sacred hang. But the mom, you know, I like how... Camilla's like basically being den mother and she even says like oh man I didn't think I'd ever have six kids but like, she's like you know trying to be nice to them making them dinner she's always she's worried about making them food that they'll like because they're from another world you know so stuff's gonna be different they, they we do get a lot of gags them not understanding things and on you know on earth or how things are done Amity's hair is like super adorable I do like this little look her little get up here her little outfit absolutely super cute I love it hair's great Everyone looks really good in their human clothes, but they're trying to figure out what's going on. Oh, you know, we got to be able to do something about this. And, you know, like, oh, let's take a break. Uh, remember how Flapjack was kind of poking around? Uh, Amity puts a, f- a foot through the floorboards and there's like a secret little scroll. It looks like a, a secret decoded message. It's a puzzle. It's something like, oh, wow, look at this. And then instead of showing Luce or telling her about it, they're like, oh, no, we'll figure this out. And we don't want to bother them. And it's weird. There's like that whole, uh, it, this whole subplot makes no sense to me. You're all trying to get back home. You're, you know, you, you survived Bellows. You have no idea what's happening in the bowling aisles. Why keep this from Luce? Why? What what benefit does it give to Luce? I don't know. Someone in the comments below, do you think that was a good idea? I thought it was a terrible idea. But they're trying to go, oh, we'll solve this problem without, without it. So it doesn't have to bother her. Uh, we get to her school. She's just kind of just doing, you know, just 
She does not, school's not important right now. Uh, everything that's happening in Bowling Isles, she doesn't know if Ida's dead. She doesn't know if King's dead. Uh, I'm keeping my friends away from their family. I, I, I feel like I'm 100% responsible because everything I did in the past. So she's just at school to be at school, you know? And she's not paying attention. Not like she ever paid attention beforehand, but she's really not paying attention. And I guess they're talking about some classic uh, story myth, you know, a legend, uh, and then talking about how the hero went through this and did this, all this kind of stuff. And she kind of has a, an outburst, like, oh, if the if the hero would have known that was going to happen, then they should never have done it. If they would have known what they would have done to their families, they would have they would hate the hero. They wouldn't love him. But that's called the self-sacrifice. That's called the, the, the classic, you know, hero's journey. There's times where standing up to the evil does bring the hellfire down on you and your family. But if your family does love you and they know you did it for the right reasons, they're not going to hate you. They might be upset with you or whatever, but they're not going to be like, oh, Luce, we hate you. And that's that's something that she's constantly worried about. But again, she's a little girl, so she's not going to have that you know, perspective. Everything's happening right here, right now. And I can only feel my negative emotions right now. So she has this big outburst. I wish the teacher would have been, that's an interesting way to look at it. Do you really think that the hero's family would have hated him? Let's open up a discussion. I had a wonderful teacher in high school who would do stuff like that. It was a, we had a civics class. They don't teach civics anymore, but he would let us argue about everything. No matter what the topic was, he would sit there and allow us to go back and forth. As long as things, he was a moderator. He didn't make sure things didn't get out of hand, but we were allowed to talk about everything. I mean, absolutely anything we wanted to talk about that was politics or uh, entertainment, anything. We could talk about it as long as it was in a format of like a debate. It was really good. I absolutely love that teacher. Mr. Vaughn, he was number one. But that I wish the teacher would have done something, but instead he's just like dumbfounded and stupid. I freaking hate that. Um, I do like Luce's little shrine <laughs> and her and her thing. She, from the outside, they probably think she's absolutely insane, but she has a little shrine, a little king shrine and everything, and she just feels bad. So these two mega dorks walk up to her, and she's like, what's going on, fellas? Oh, well, hey, Luce, we know you. And she's like, well, I don't know you guys. Well, we're new, but we know all about you. So I guess her exploits are just known throughout the school. She's a legend. It's like, oh, you're going to make another cool costume for Halloween? And I like that. I'm like, oh, definitely come to our uh, Halloween, like, boo bash. I couldn't have a big, like, celebration. You're a cool girl. You're going to love this. Uh, I do like the fact that she walked by the library and the librarian was like, yeah, I remember you. <laughs> um, they're driving home. And, of course, Camilla's like, oh, I'm trying to make them the food they like. And I, can I do that? Do you think this food's going to be okay? They come apart uh, upon a car accident. And the mom's like, oh, yeah, that deer just jumped out in the middle of the wood, off the street. And the little girl's like, I don't think it was a deer, mommy. And we see like a deer skull, but then the goop, you know, the the goop that came out of um, Bellos, like his whatever goopy essence. And so I guess it's taking over like skeletons and stuff. How creepy is that? This is that creepy vibe that I really liked in this episode. Get back to Hunter and he's trying to, you know, everyone's kind of living their life and trying to do things. He's like learning to sew, which is pretty cool. Every guy needs to learn how to sew. At least to fix a pair of jeans, stuff like that. You should, I had no basic sewing. I used to know how to use a sewing machine, but man, that was such a long time ago. But he's talking to, to um, Gus. I like to have a good, you know, it's good to have man talk, right? And he's like, do you miss it? He's like, what was it like to be in the coven? Oh, well, you know, all that kind of stuff. And But check out this um, this sewing thing. I made this really cool, there's this mystical animals called wolves and I think they're really cool. He straight up made a three wolf moon shirt. Hunter's a cool dude. Like he's, he's A-OK in my book. But he's like, all I did was train and, the weekends were fun. I was able to go out and go on missions and stuff. And Gus like, yeah, I I miss my dad. And you have to realize they're still kids. They're still teenagers, like young teenagers. They're not even close to being adults. So they still, you know, mom and dad, they take care of things, you know, or Gus's case, dad and dad. And, you know, they're kind of having their little moment. And I like that, that they're it's like, hey, check out this book. You know, I found it down here. And it's like some space adventure book. It's 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 Star Trek. And then he's like, oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's about these people having an adventure in the stars. Like, why would anyone want to go there? Oh, but he starts explaining all the characters. And it's, it's Star Trek. He's like, oh, one of the characters is a it's a clone. And he's hiding it from like the captain and from everyone. But he's still one of the good guys. But he's really one of the bad guys. Just a, a clone of one of the bad guys. And of course, Hunter obviously feels like, oh, geez, what's that about? And that's something they can bond over. And he's like, oh, so tell me about, so what happens to that guy? Oh, you really want to know about this show? And he has, a, he has a, like a little Trek shrine and like all where all the, I guess Camilla was into Trek, which is super awesome. 
we get to loose and here's a big thing. Um, pe- non-Mexican people, non-Latin people, there's no effing way unmarried couples are sleeping in the same room. Nope. Uh, 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 no way, not no way, not no how. What's the point of separating the boys and girls? Obviously, because you don't want boys and girls sleeping in the same room because, you know, the boys are boys and girls are girls. But you're going to allow girlfriends to sleep in the same room like what you know what i'm saying like uh not in the latin household there is no effing way that is happening like why not let hunter and and willow sleep in the same room what's the difference anyways i thought that was lame but the the mom's having nightmares because you know loose kind of gets up and walks out and you know and everyone's having these um there are different ways of dealing what's good what's going on so uh camilla's trying to like figure out like oh maybe i can make them this kind of meal and Maybe if I can go to the apple butcher or whatever that is, I'm going to get apple blood. It's so stupid. Well, I'll have to use food coloring, but then she kind of has a flashback kind of nightmares about Luce was a little girl and she's like, oh, look, I found a, a snake skin, but she calls him like PJs. That's super adorable. Oh, huh, she's so funny. But then other parents are like, oh, geez, that's disgusting. And then she's always feeling like Luce is being herself and other people don't understand her. And as being a parent, you're going to be like, what, what's wrong with my daughter? What, what, you know, what are you saying? And you want to be defensive because you love them so much. But at the same time, you have to realize your kid's a little different. There's nothing wrong with that, but the world is going to see it a little bit differently. And getting into like arguments or feeling like you have to constantly defend your child, Luce will come into her own. She's a little bit quirky and a little bit weird, but I think she'll grow up to be a decent adult. She just has to get there, right? But she even has flashbacks to when she was talking to like a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist is like, oh, you know, after... uh your, your husband passed away, you know, Luce has been, her grades are inconsistent. It's like, oh, Luce has always been kind of, you know, wishy-washy with school and everything. It's like, well, then maybe you can help her go to this, this, uh, this camp and maybe I'll help her get her back on the right track. Here's the thing. Did Luce actually speak with the psychiatrist? Was she seeing a psychiatrist? I think it would have been good for her because her dad did die at such a young age and being a young girl going through changes, there's hormones, your dad's dead. You feel like an outsider. There's a lot going on in this little girl's head. So she would, it would benefit. I don't think there'd be an issue with having a psychiatrist at this point, but it seemed like they just wanted to send her to a camp and I'll think inside the box. Oh, we're going to, we're going to like, it's just, it was shown to be such a negative thing. And I I don't like that portrayal of it. She's woken up by, by Luce and Luce is talking to her. And I do like the fact that, you know, she's mom, aren't you like mad at me? Like, like hate me, you know, she didn't say that, but that's, that's, she wants her mom to be angry with her because I can understand anger. I can process somebody hating me it's hard to process someone loving me knowing when i did when i went back in time did all that did bad stuff i didn't do it on purpose i thought i was doing something good good intentions right but it's harder to process love because like why 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 how could you love me but she's like oh can i sleep in here with you tonight which is super sweet you know sleeping with your mommy (laughs) so sweet and i see the the snake skin on the thing is her palisman gonna be a snake is that what it is they show the snake a lot i don't know she's slithering i can't believe it we see some more creepy stuff and you know, like, Oh, maybe there, maybe Bellis is back. That little bit of that goop is starting to like form up and like starting to take over animal bones and animal uh, carcasses and stuff. We see them like all over the floor, which is right outside their house. She doesn't have a fence line. It's a super weird, right? She didn't have any neighbors, but yeah, there's just like a pile of bones just leading to the forest. Super creepy. I love it. They're going to go out and like, okay, Luce is at school. We're going to go explore the human world and we're going to try to figure out some clues and figure out what this puzzle is about. We got to do something. So get to wear our, our normal clothes. Again, everyone's absolutely adorable. Amity looks great. I love the way Willow's wearing his nice outfit. <laughs> Hunter's like in costume, like, oh, this is how people dress in the future. And then like this book was written in the 90s about the year 2008. Like that was like 10 years ago. But they're like, oh, you know, OK, I'll, I'll change. They go out. Even V. V has crazy hair. I absolutely love it. Hunter and his palsman with a flapjack. He's starting to like, you know, look in the mirror. And he, he, it's it's tough for him because there's a lot of bad stuff that went down. A lot of scary things went down. And being part of Bellos, am I really the enemy? Hiding this secret. It's going to, when you have a secret like that, it's going to eat you up. And, you, and you're so scared to share the secret and it's only going to get worse. The, the longer you hold on to it, the, the worse it's going to get. So it's better to sit down with everyone and just explain the situation. They trust you. They love you. They're not going to abandon you. It's been three months. And they've known you before that. So they're not going to be like, ew, get away from me. Like, honestly, if Luce accepts you, they're, they're, they're all going to fall in line because Luce is a very accepting person and then everyone likes Luce. So come on, get over it, Hunter. 
we see, you know, that some of that goop got on him. So it was like, it's taking over him. Like, oh no, I feel bad for Hunter because I don't want him to have to relive all that. Uh, they go out and then we kind of get, not necessarily another kind of montage. No, it actually scared me. This transition from Hunter to, to that skeleton thing. It actually made me jump a little bit. I'm not going to lie. It made me go, oh, because it happened so quick. I don't know. It got me. But they're going around. They go to like that magic shop and they're like messing with stuff, which I thought like, oh my God, stop screwing with things. Amity doesn't know how the card catalog system works. Like it's not alive. So she's trying to like coax it out with candy or whatever. But like a little girl shows her how to use it and she gets all embarrassed. Adorable. She runs out of there. That's a fun scene. They go see a giraffe because remember how they said giraffes were banished from the boiling aisles for being like creepy. They try to talk to it and it's just a giraffe, but then that's a big old monster face. So giraffes are monsters. They sit down. Okay. Uh, none of this has worked out. Um, we don't, we, we're running out of leads. We have this puzzle thing, but we don't know how to solve it. But V is like, you know, what? I think there's a place we need to go. Remember that historical society where she was held captive by that one crazy dude. I don't even remember his name, but he thought he was like a, a, a witch hunter. She's like, no, um, you can stay out if you need to. Like, we'll go in. If it's too much for you, we, we completely understand. So, like, no, 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 I'll go with you guys. We stood up to a giraffe. We can stand up to anything, right? They go in there and it's that one girl. And she's like, oh, what happened to, uh, what was his name? Steve or whatever. Oh no, the, he got kicked out. He's a kid like changing things around and he's a crazy guy. It's like, oh, do you have any idea what this is? Like, oh, this is a cool like puzzle thing. And it's like a picture thing. Like, oh, when you see the letter H in the, in the ear, it means here, not like chop your ear off. But does it mean here as in you should hear something with, you know, like a sound or here, like it's right here, like a location. But this is like a big puzzle thing. Uh, she gets a phone call. So she walks away and then they start walking around the museum and they show like, oh, you know, we, we made some fun memories here. Look at all these good times we had. And then I like how V's like, oh, let's take another picture. So they take a nice little selfie together. Again, all these kids, they make, they're, they're a fun little group of kids. But then she looks at the back of the, the, the picture. She's like, wait a second, that map, it matches this puzzle. Like, what if we can line this up and then we can, maybe it leads us to some Titan blood because that's when they look at the, the other pictures and see blood. They see this, like, oh, well, maybe there's some secret Titan blood buried somewhere. Then they could use that to make a door. Perfect. They figure this out and they go, oh, we got to tell loose. Oh no, we'll make it a surprise. What the F? In the comments down below, did you think, oh yeah, once they found this information, they should make it a cute little surprise for Luce. This isn't like you discovered the secret to, you know, gummy berry juice. <laughs> this is to save the whole demon realm. I don't know. I thought that whole setup was absolutely ridiculous. We get back home and Luce is there and I just think it's weird that I, I thought it was a bad idea for... Hunter to lock up Flapjack. I'm like, dude, don't do that. <laughs> okay. What's it going to do? Fly away and leave you? Of course not. Like it's Flapjack. He ain't going nowhere, but he's starting to think I'm seeing bellows. I'm seeing bellows. He's, 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 he's here. Tells Luce about it because him and Luce, when I have a secret, you have a secret. We're, we're the secret pals, right? We're secret buddies. So I can trust you with stuff. So it's like, it's that weird kind of, I don't want them to find out something about me that I know about you. And I don't want them to find out something about me that you know about me. So that like have that he has that kind of bond with Luce. I think Bellos is here. Like, why don't we wait for everyone to get back? No, no, no. We're gonna do this now. Ah, you're an idiot. I do like the fact that they're wearing little masks. I thought that was adorable. It severely limits your vision, but it's adorable. They start walking through the house. Super creepy. I love the creepy vibe. It's great. They find a like back door that was covered up with wallpaper. But didn't they like totally decorate this house? Or did they just do that very front room and nothing else? You think they would have found this room by then? Ah, uh, call me crazy, right? But they find like this, you know, basement and like, oh God, you never go in the basement. <laughs> go on guys, scary movie 101, you'd never go in the basement. They go down there and then there's like a wardrobe and it's shaking and it's just a possum. Like, oh, thank God, it was just a possum. We're like, oh, you know, I even lose like, oh, you know, because Hunter goes, oh, we have to protect everyone. It's like, yeah, that, that includes you too. And I'm going to protect you because you're your family now. And then he kind of has a little cry like, Ooh, which is nice because he's never had his whole family dynamic was you do things for me. And if you're useless to me, we throw you away. Now it's like, we're going to protect you. And it doesn't matter if you add anything. We love you and care about you and your family. I like that. Great stuff. They make their way back up the stairs. And I thought this was dope. This was so cool. Okay. Bellas is gone. Or you see like the horns. Yeah, that's such a cool transition. I love that. There should be more of that kind of stuff. But I'm like, it's in them. 
He did see him. He does see Bellows because it's inside of him. That's why no one else sees it because it's in your freaking head, literally in your head. You know, everyone comes back and then they kind of want to be mums the word about all this kind of stuff about like seeing Bellows and everything. So they're kind of just like, I don't know, not being truthful. See, if people would have just sat down and they just all talked to each other, this would have been solved, you know, completely. Then they're coming up with Halloween costumes. So we did, she's going to do the good witch Azura. So she's going to be like her friend. And then Azura, oh, you're going to do the costumes. And then of course, um, Gus and Hunter are going to be the Trek guys. Right. So they're going to like, okay. So I like the fact that they went straight fantasy and they went straight sci-fi. Super fun. Luce is making a more video diaries. That's like her thing. And you know, she's crying. She feels bad. And she kind of, you know, lays it out. Like the way I was saying, she feels bad for keeping her parent, her kid, her kids, her, um, friends, away from their parents, so they're missing their kids. We have no idea what's going on over there. Everyone could be dead for all she knows. It's all her fault for showing Bellows the light spell and showing him where the how to get the collector and all that. So she feels super bad about all that. She's making a little vlog about it. Halloween time. Everyone's in the costume. How adorable is Amity with red hair? Okay. <laughs> it's it's absolutely completely like a hundred percent like shocking to see her look so different. But I think it looks great on her. I, I think it's a great look. Everyone looks good. Everyone looks fun in their costumes. They get dropped off and but if they're like sixteen and seventeen, why aren't they driving themselves? That's why I mean they're probably more like twelve and thirteen. Everyone keeps saying that they're older. I don't think they're that old. Anyways, regardless, they're all getting ready to have fun and then Hunter sees and she, he looks out into the woods and sees freaking Bellows like the nasty monster version of him. But, you know, everyone else is like, oh, oh, OK, maybe, maybe I didn't see that. He keeps trying to he's convincing and unconvincing himself that he's seeing anything. There's like a play going on. It's a, it's a it's very, um you know, Salem witch trials. And then like Gus like interrupts the play and like, I don't know. Then the one guy shows up, all these kids are demons and they, he just gets arrested because you can't attack a child. Like what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> it's like what did you think did you think that was gonna work out in your favor you freaking idiot but they get ready to go on like a, a haunted bail ride and then that's when we, we get backstory they tell the whole the philip brothers story two brothers lived here they kind of didn't fit in they kind of ran into a witch the older brother was like enchanted by the witch so was that ida did ida like fall in love with the human but wouldn't she have known that was a human boy like had a had a little brother like wouldn't he have known that it's weird I, I don't know if we ever get the full answer here but obviously time flows the same on the demon world as it does on earth belos has been this little monster version of himself for like a long long time so this had to be a, a ancestor of Ida's. i don't know if it, because it's even too old for her mother it would have to have been like the mother's mother if anything even if, if there's any relation there but that's kind of weird the, you know, it's a small world, right? <laughs> Two separate worlds and somehow all these people know each other. Like even the the the, the Hayride ladies, like, yeah, the older brother found a hot witch girlfriend and the little brother got all mad. Pretty much, is that, is that he's thinking that all oh, these witches seduced my brother and like stole his soul away and now he's you know, he's burning in hell and I got to kill witches. Is, is that what it all boils down to? Eh, enough to make that a lifetime thing? Like you never grew up and saw another witch that was physically attractive and he didn't care about it. You know what I'm trying to say? Like never, not once. Bellows, you bet. Then that whole situation, of course, gets Hunter going because, you know, it's about Bellows and everything. And it's like, oh, geez, uh, uh, what do we do? We can't tell him and it's kind of my fault. And pulls loose and say, hey, they're going to try to surprise you with this little map we found where there's Titan blood, but I'm seeing Bellows we have to get to that Titan's blood before they do. Why? Why hide that from everyone? It makes no sense to hide this from anybody. But he gets mad at Flapjack. He's like, Flapjack, go get the puzzle paper. Flapjack's like, dude, we shouldn't do that. Then he like yells at him. And then even Lucy's like, bro, what the hell, man? He's like, oh. I'll say that again. Hey, what the heck? I'm just really, you know, I, uh, you know, I've been seeing things and, but you could tell he even had like bellow size when he did it, but they take the thing and they're going to go off and do it themselves. Uh, Camilla was at home handing out candy with V and then she so happens to turn on the video vlog thing. And it's like, Oh, I went into your room to pick up your laundry and I just so happened to see your diary. Yeah. Bull crap. Ma, you'd be looking through my stuff. She starts seeing some of the old vlogs that she was making. Uh, how long has she had this laptop? Is this her YouTube page? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Unless it was like on a thumb drive. But this is when she's like little and she's like, oh yeah, I'm going to do all this stuff. And, you know, I'm I'm going to try to cut my hair with this cool sword I got at the con. Oh, I messed up my hair. 
and you know things have been haven't been going so good since dad and you know i'm feeling kind of alone and she's kind of talking about her mom so it's, it's it's stuff camilla probably wishes like why didn't you just come to me and talk about it? but it's always hard to talk about your feelings boys girls anyone doesn't matter it's always tough to talk about your feelings but then the last one she she gets through and it's basically her saying i'm going to tell everyone if we get that that demon door open you guys are going to go home i'm going to stay with my mom i'm going to tell everyone on halloween so they go oh, no let's we got to find loose we have to talk to her before she says anything get back to hunter and loose hunter seeing stuff the blood's turning into the goop in his hand he's having a full-blown freak out but loose like what are you talking about i don't see i don't see uh bellows or anything oh no he's over there and he takes off she's like oh crap where did you go she remembers the spell like one of her talismans almost working one of the little papers she's like wait a second she tries it a little bit of light she's like oh i must be the reason why this is working is because she's closer to the demon world site. Like there must be like a, uh, like an epicenter where that's where that demon blood is. And since the magic comes from demons blood, it, it, it's uh, what I want to say. It's a little too, too convenient that that's how that works, but whatever. So she just kept that in her pocket. She could use her papers everywhere. Would it ever exhaust the, the demon, the, the, the Titan blood? Who knows? But she's able to use little light balls that kind of like breadcrumbs almost kind of like the way the bigger the ball gets the closer i am get back to camilla and the rest of the worded worded hunter and uh and loose head off to camilla shows up hey has loose said anything silly i don't know we actually haven't been able to find her but v like she has to uh, find my phone it's gonna track her down that way loose gets to like a little bog and she's able to use an ice bridge to get across the way and then just in the very the first second that hunter's talking like oh he's he's taking over he's talking like bellows too calm too collected and she's like, oh, I'm looking for Flapjack. He got lost. But, but look for that. I'm looking for him. You look for the Titan's blood. Have you found it yet? It's like, no, I haven't. See, Flapjack scared out of his balls. Like, he's like shaking like crazy. It's like, What's there? Flapjack, is everything all right? Oh, loose. And then, you know, the classic Bellows talk. And then they have the whole like, oh, he got taken over. And I felt always like, oh, your, your talismans work here. You know, uh, that's interesting. I use an ice bridge to get across the water. Uh, that's good to know. And then you can say, oh, crap, he's he's gone full 100% Bellows. And, you know, she's trying to, like, fight him off a little bit. He's like, oh, you're not trying to kill me, are you? Because you don't want to hurt this body. But guess what? I don't care if you do because I don't care what happens to Hunter. So all the advantage is Bellows's in this, in this fight because he's in the body of someone you don't want to hurt. Everyone shows up. And when I first saw this picture floating around Twitter, I'm like, oh, this is like weird fan art because who's that redhead chick? It's totally Amity. I'm like, oh, when did that happen? But I didn't know the context of it being a costume. Then we get a pretty dope fight. The 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 animation quality, Chef Kiss, mwah, absolutely phenomenal. It, it's a pretty cool fight. It lasts about a minute. And the animation is just through the roof. People are doing cool moves. I like how V, remember her thing was eating magic? So she just straight up goes up to him and starts, just starts sucking out all his magic. I'm like, oh, dope move, V. You're the, you're the freaking best. But Bellos is still really strong. They're going to knock her away. And, you know, they push her out of the way. And I'm like, oh, wow. Everyone got to do something cool. I thought it was pretty badass. But then the, the animation stops being good. And it goes back to being normal. And it's so jarring when that happens. I thought this was, this 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 actually hurt my heart. Because I'm like, oh, no. Because little dude, you know, I don't like when little dudes get hurt. Freaking Bellos snatches Flapjack out of the air. Just cracks him because know how Bellos would eat Palsmans. It was enough. Uh, he cracked him a little bit, but then that was enough for Hunter to kind of fight back and like let loose the grip. So Flapjack flew to, flies away, flies to. Uh, I want to say Lumity. I can't believe it. Flies to loose, and I'm like, oh no, he's like bleeding. Look at that. Like if that was red, homeboy's dying. It, there's no way his he doesn't have internal organ damage. This little guy is going to die. But I'm like, damn, I can't believe they they freaking showed that. Hunter fighting back. He's like, you know, you know, yeah, I know you don't care what I want, but what I want is to leave the Golden Guard, to leave the, the Emperor's Coven, to never go back, to study wild magic. I want to go to normal school. I want to just be with my friends and I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. And I, I thought this was funny and a little weird. Maybe he doesn't know how to swim. He jumps in the water, sinks like a stone and is about to die. I'm like, dude was in the water for five seconds. <laughs> Like that's the worst swimmer of all time. Uh, Camilla jumps in, pulls him out, saves him, which I thought was really cool. 
Bellos like, like vomits himself out of his body. So he's like that big, nasty, goopy monster version of himself. But he had the uh, the Titan's blood, cracks it over the door, opens up the portal. He's like, see you later, lady. Takes off. And I do like how Camilla's like, that's the guy you guys have been fighting. Holy. Can-. Like, I, I didn't, I could not imagine that this was the person that you were fighting with. And I do like, this is such a mom thing. She's like, you know, oh, poor baby. Are you okay? He's like, no, I'm fine. Uh you know, he can barely breathe, but he's, he's, he's hurt. He's going to die. Then Flapjack flies to him and gives up its life for, for Hunter, that little dude. I always love it when the little dude steps it up, when the, when the, the guy who's just like this small little nothing and they do the big sacrifice and that's what Flapjack did. And that's super sweet. He kind of turns into energy and he just, he's gone. And that's super sad. Uh, Hunter's like, is everyone okay? And then I like how Gus is first like, Flapjack is gone, man. It's like, don't, I know, I know, don't say anything. I'm like, oh, 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 his little guy, like he's only like his real, like his friends are great and all, but Flapjack was like the first one to like really be his true friend. And now Flapjack's dead. That's super sad. Door still open. And that's when Lucifer's going to be like, oh, all this is my fault. Before Bellows jumped through the portal, he's like, oh yeah, thanks a lot, Lucifer, for going to the past and showing me how, where the the collector was. And jumps to the thing. And then, and he's like, yeah, he was lying, right? And he's like, no, he wasn't lying. I thought I was doing something good, but I, I screwed up everything. And you're going to hate me now. She's like, of course I can never hate you because we know you did it out of good intentions. You didn't do it on purpose to be evil. So they accept her and like they would. Like, why wouldn't they? But she's like, you know, I'm going to stay here. You guys are going to go home. But uh, Camilla's like, oh, we're all going to go. I'm going to go too. After I saw that, I need to go with you. And then V's going to stay behind and pretend to be Camilla. Which is, I get, I the fact that V got, got demoted to, oh, Luce is going to regular school. Oh, so I can just be the, the reason why she can be gone so long and not necessarily a character. Ah, it's a little lame. But uh, they go through the portal and boom, that's the end of the episode. There's these really cool end credits. They're very anime. Like if there was a manga, it would look just like this and that'd be pretty cool. But uh, these are very, very cool. Especially the one with Hunter. Look how sweet he is. Oh, little little baby. But uh, yeah, I again, there's a lot I like about this episode. Some of the stupid logical stuff. Again, shipping is not my thing, but if it's your thing, you're going to love all the little weird montages. But uh, overall, again, 7.9, those little things keep it from being great. 8 is a great. 9 and 10 is like reserved for gold standard. This was a pretty good episode. I like this episode. Um, two more to go. There, I'm assuming each of the episodes are around 40 minutes. I'm going to try to get to them as quickly as possible, but um. What keeps me motivated, comments, sharing, liking videos, getting views, those motivate me to do more content. When I put out a video and it gets 10 views, it, the motivation goes down. You know, I love talking about cartoons and animation and things like that. And when I interact with my commenters, good or bad, it, it still motivates me to do more work. So thank you guys. Do all that good stuff. Share, like, do all that fun YouTube stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one. in here thanks for watching the video remember liking subscribing sharing and commenting on the video really helps out a lot it gets the video spread around more more people get to see the videos and we get to make more videos for you guys so thank you and we appreciate every single one of you guys